The cleverer you are, the more foolish your simple-mindedness. The totally clever are total fools in their simple-mindedness. We cannot save ourselves from the cleverness of the spirit of this time through incre increasing our cleverness, but through accepting what our cleverness hates most, namely, simple-mindedness. Yet we also do not want to be artificial fools because we have fallen into simple-mindedness. Rather, we will be clever fools. That leads to the supreme meaning. Cleverness couples itself with intention. Simple-mindedness knows no intention. Cleverness conquers the world, but simple-mindedness, the soul. So take on the vow of poverty of spirit in order to partake of the soul. Against this, the scorn of my cleverness rose up. Many will laugh at my foolishness, but no one will laugh more than I laughed at myself. So I overcame scorn. But when I had overcome it, I was near to my soul, and she could speak to me, and I was soon to see the desert becoming green. The next part is called Descent into Hell in the Future. In the following night, the air was filled with many voices. A loud voice called, I am falling. Others cried out and Others cried out confused and excited during this. Where to? What do you want? Should I entrust myself to this confusion? I shuddered. It is a, dread, it is a dreadful deep. Do you want me to leave myself to chance, to the madness of my own darkness? Whither? Whither? You fall, and I want to fall with you, whoever you are. The spirit of the depths opened my eyes, and I caught a glimpse of the inner things, the world of my soul, the many-formed and changing. I see a gray rock face along which I sink into great depths. I stand in black dirt up to my ankles in a dark cave. Shadows sweep over me. I am seized by fear, but I know I must go in. I crawl through a narrow crack in the rock and reach an inner cave whose bottom is covered with black water. But beyond this, I catch a glimpse of a luminous red stone which I must reach. I wade through the muddy water. The cave is full of the frightful noise of shrieking voices. I take the stone. It covers a dark opening in the rock. I hold the stone in my hand peering around inquiringly. I do not want to listen to the voices. They keep me away. But I want to know. Hear something wants to be uttered. I place my ear to the opening. I hear the flow of underground waters. I see the bloody head of a man on a dark stream. Someone wounded, someone slain floats there. I take in this image for a long time shuddering. I see a large black scarab floating past on the dark stream. In the deepest reach of the stream shines a red sun radiating through the dark water. There I see, and terror seizes me, small serpents on the, on the dark rock walls striving toward the depths where the sun shines. A thousand serpents, serpents crowd around, Veiling the sun, deep night falls. A red stream of blood, thick red blood, springs up, surging for a long time, then ebbing. I am seized by fear. What did I see? Heal the wounds that doubt inflicts on me, my soul. That too is to be overcome, so that I can recognize your supreme meaning. How far away everything is, and how I have turned back. My spirit is a spirit of torment. It tears asunder my contemplation. It would dismantle everything and rip it apart. 
I am still a victim of my thinking. When can I order my thinking to be quiet, so that my thoughts, those unruly hounds, will crawl to my feet? How can I ever hope to hear your voice louder, to see your voice, to see your face clearer, when all my thoughts howl? I am stunned, but I want to be stunned, since I have sworn to you, my soul, to trust you even if you lead me through madness. How shall I ever walk under your sun if I do not drink the bitter drought of slumber to the lees? Help me so that I not choke on my own knowledge. The fullness of my knowledge threatens to fall in on me. My knowledge has a thousand voices, an army roaring like lions. The air trembles when they speak and I am their defenseless sacrifice. Keep it far from me, science, that clever knower, that bad prison master who binds the soul and imprisons it in a lightless cell. But above all, protect me from the serpent of judgment, which only appears to be a healing serpent, yet in your depths is infernal poison and agonizing death. I want to go down cleansed into your depths with white garments and not rush in like some thief, seizing whatever I can and fleeing breathlessly. Let me persist in divine astonishment so that I am ready to behold your wonders. Let me lay my head on a stone before your door so that I am prepared to receive your light. When the desert begins to bloom, it brings forth strange plants. You will consider yourself mad, and in a certain sense you will in fact be mad. To the extent that the Christianity of this time lacks madness, it lacks divine life. Take note of what the ancients taught us in images. Madness is divine. But because the ancients lived this image concretely in events, it became a deception for us, since we became masters of the reality of the world. It is unquestionable. If you ever enter into the world of the soul, you are like a madman, and a doctor would consider you to be sick. What I say here can be seen as sickness but no one can see it as sickness more than I do. This is how I overcame madness. If you do not know what divine madness is, suspend judgment and wait for the fruits. But know that there is a divine madness which is nothing other than the overpowering of the spirit of this time through the spirit of the depths. Speak then of sick delusion when the spirit of the depths can no longer stay down and forces a man to speak in tongues instead of in human speech and makes him believe that he himself is the spirit of the depths. But also speak of sick delusion when the spirit of this time does not leave a man and forces him to see only the surface, to deny the spirit of the depths and to take himself for the spirit of the times. The spirit of this time is ungodly the spirit of the depths is ungodly. Balance is godly. Because I was caught up in the spirit of this time, precisely what happened to me on this night had to happen to me, namely that the spirit of the depths erupted with force and swept away the spirit of this time with a powerful wave. But the spirit of the depths had gained this power because I had spoken to my soul during twenty-five nights in the desert, and I had given her all my love and submission. But during the twenty-five days, I gave all my love and submission to things, to men, and to the thoughts of this time. I went into the desert only at night. Thus can you differentiate sick and divine delusion. Whoever does the one and does without the other, you may call sick, since he is out of balance. But who can withstand fear when the divine intoxication and madness comes to him? Love, soul, and God are beautiful 
and terrible. The ancients brought over some of the beauty of God into this world, and this world became so beautiful that it appeared to the spirit of the time to be fulfillment, and better than the bosom of the Godhead. The frightfulness and cruelty of the world lay under wraps and in the depths of our hearts. If the spirit of the depths seizes you, you will feel the cruelty and cry out in torment. The spirit of the depths is pregnant with ice, fire, and death. You are right to fear the spirit of the depths, as he is full of horror. You see in these days what the spirit of the depths bore. You did not believe it, but you would have known it if you had taken counsel with your fear. Blood shone at me from the red light of the crystal, and when I picked it up to discover its mystery, there lay the horror uncovered before me. In the depths of what is to come lay murder. The blonde hero lay slain. The black beetle is the death that is necessary for renewal. And so thereafter, a new sun glowed, the sun of the depths, full of riddles, a sun of the night. And as the rising sun of spring quickens the dead earth, so the sun of the depths quickened the dead, and thus began the terrible struggle between light and darkness. Out of that burst the powerful and ever unvanquished source of blood. This was what was to come, which you now experience in your life, and it is even more than that. In parentheses, I had this vision of the night of the 12th of December, 1913. Depths and surface should mix so that new life can develop. Yet the new life does not develop outside of us, but within us. What happens outside us in these days is the image that the people live in events. To bequeath this image immemorially to far-off times, so that they might learn from it, for their own way, just as we learn from the images that the ancients have lived before us in events. Life does not come from events, but from us. Everything that happens outside has already been. Therefore, whoever considers the event from outside always sees only that it already was, and that it is always the same. But whoever looks from inside knows that everything is new. The events that happen are always the same, but the creative depths of man are not always the same. Events signify nothing. They signify only in us. We create the meaning of events. The meaning is and always was artificial. We make it. Because of this, we seek in ourselves the meaning of events, so that the way of what is to come becomes apparent and our life can flow again. That which you need comes from yourself, namely, the meaning of the event. The meaning of events is not their particular meaning. This meaning exists in learned books. Events have no meaning. The meaning of events is the way of salvation that you create. The meaning of events comes from the possibility of life in this world that you create. It is the mastery of this world and the assertion of your soul in this world. This meaning of events is the supreme meaning that is not in events, and not in the soul, but is the God standing between events and the soul, the mediator of life, the way, the bridge, and the going across. I would not have been able to see what was to come if I could not have seen it in myself. I'll stop there. Uh, I'm in the middle of this section, but Four parts is enough, and my voice is getting hoarse. So, I might post a video about my reflection on what all this means, and what Jung is doing here, or what is being done to Jung here. Uh, so, look for that shortly.